Folks, today we're talking about the absolute bank run on Kamigawa Collector Boxes. Ladies and gentlemen, unless you've been living under a rock, as of the filming of this video, Kamigawa Collector Boxes are literally the hottest thing since Fidget Spinners, Ruby's Ex-Girlfriend, Pogs, and the Beanie Babies. If, if a Pog and a Beanie Baby combine into a Fidget Spinner, you have, ladies and gentlemen, Kamigawa Collector Boxes. Let's look at the data. As of the filming of this video, Kamigawa Collector Boxes are just on a, on a tear. On a tear. Distribution? Forget it. Forget it. I think one or two distributors have product, and they're limiting it to like one box per store per week as they literally just slowly slow roll their last pallet. It's stupid. Now, Amazon, as of the filming of this video last night, Amazon, which is we're going to talk about more in a second, is out of Kamigawa collector boxes. Now, many people are saying, well, Rudy, why are you focusing just on this one particular product line? Why aren't you mentioning the rest of the Kamigawa products? Well, because the expected value of Kamigawa on a regular draft box is at a normal standard price. The expected value of Kamigawa draft is around like $80 to $90 a box using TCG Market, TCG Mid. So, the question is, <laughs> Rudy, it's such a good set. They did a better theme. It's, well, this type of evidence proves, without a reasonable doubt in my mind, that reinstilling truly valuable chase cards in a particular product line changes the entire game. Holy hell, what took so long? Because now you're saying, no, no, Rudy, Rudy, you're wrong. It's not about the expensive parallel chase serialized special taco card. It's not about that. I said, oh, okay, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. It, it's the whole set is better. I said, oh, okay. That's why draft boxes aren't $110, $120, right? That's why set boxes are sitting at what? One, one ten? The pricing of every other Kamigawa product is within normal range. Expected value of normal Kamigawa products is at the same price range as previous sets, excluding Crimson Val. We don't talk about the uh, the losses in the L's. We don't talk about that product line. So, without a reasonable doubt, I'm looking at the Kamigawa collector box, and obviously, Papa Bezos and his giant penis rocket that shoots the space into Amazon holds the benchmark pricing for collector boxes. It, it holds it steady usually at that maybe 210 to 230 range. Amazon, for the first time ever, Papa Bezos was literally like, we're out. We're out, bro. Like, he pulled a Mark Cuban on Shark Tank. Papa Bezos ran out of Kamigawa collector boxes within two weeks of release, which has never happened in the history of standard boxes in regular collector boxes for a standard magic set. It's never happened. This is the first time Amazon has run out of collector boxes right at release. Unbelievable for a standard set of magic, just a regular standard set. I think... Um, Commander Legends and Modern Horizons 2 was a close second, but it took a little longer than a little over a week. I think that one took actually like a month or so. It took a little longer. Anyways, this is a standard set. And obviously, the question is, well, if the other product lines aren't moving in price and the EV of the cards in the box are all within normal range of previous sets, why is the collector box going to the moon and literally coming back, going back again, and just, just, just blowing it out of the water? Because Wizards decided to finally put something to get people excited. Holy hell, what a concept. So as of the filming of this video, Amazon is wiped out. TCG players now moved from 210 to 220. We're sitting at 240 to 250 plus tax for the average person who wants to buy a collector box. eBay, same thing. But that's not the most important part of this video, ladies and gentlemen. The most important part of this data point is the depth of the market. The depth of how many sellers are out there. The depth of how much supply is sitting on the market. It is the lowest, most concerning number I have ever seen for a collector box thing. And it's been two weeks since release! TCG Player doesn't even have 100 boxes listed below $300 a box. I'm sorry, here, let, me, let me say that again. I'll get more intimate with you all so you guys understand. TCG Player has less than 100 boxes under $300. You want me to, you want to hold hands? You guys want to prance sides through the park? Dig holes? Be carrots together? Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, it gets worse. It gets worse. eBay. Kamigawa collector boxes. Sort by cheapest. No, Rudy, don't send me a link for the single Kamigawa booster pack that people are selling for $30 a piece on eBay. Or five of them for 100 Ignore those. Actual 12-pack collector boxes. That's what the market cares about. eBay. You ready for this shit? You ready for this shit, everybody? Less than 30 boxes 
below three hundred dollars. I've never seen anything like this. This is this is surreal. We're kicking off twenty twenty two. Wizards was like, yeah, you know what? Yeah, hold my party pack. Watch this. Let, let's put this. Let's, let's take a silly card because this is a test run. This is a test run. Let's take a silly card, okay? And let's do like this super rare chase things that make lottery cards and one per case seem like child's play. Let's just let's test it. <laughs> Here we are. I've never seen a collector box perform this way. This is the craziest shit I ever seen in modern day magic. And I'm gonna tell you something, everybody. You don't think Hasbro and Wizards are watching this? You don't think this data is being reported back to them? If you don't think Wizards monitors the secondary market, you don't think Wizards monitors and checks this channel and other large channels and the message boards and all the re Timmy Empire that combine into like a big Power Ranger and get angry. If you don't think Wizards watches that stuff, then I'm sorry, I, I can't help you. Because I can tell you with a hundred percent, no, a hundred and sixty-nine percent certainty that they are seeing this, they're reporting it back, and it is giving them the green light to do more high-end parallel insert lottery. Serialized is coming. I don't care what anyone says. This stuff is coming. They did a test run with a hundred serialized card in a secret layer, blew it up. Market went crazy. All right. They did a test run now with a neon parallel chase card. Look at the performance difference. Yes, Kamigawa was a good product. Yes, Kamigawa was better than the previous uh, Innistrad sets. It is what it is. But when you see a particular segment of the Kamigawa market going crazy, while the other segments are remaining somewhat stable, very active, but somewhat stable, you have to understand why is that particular sector of the market going haywire when the other sectors are not following suit. What is the variable that's isolated to that sector? Now we're looking at it, and I'm going... It's a game changer. It's a game changer, everybody. This is massive. Like, I can't emphasize enough the news. And it, seriously, and it, it, these higher prices at 240 250 plus tax, look at TCG Player. Look at the sold listings on TCG Player. This shit is selling, like, it's like 20, 30, 40 boxes a day. Even at the 240 250 price plus tax, these people are paying 260 out the door on two weeks post-release. Release plus two. This is, this is... Uncharted territory. And everyone's like, oh, you know, it's all fine, Rudy, but, you know, Papa Bezos is going to find a, a hidden pallet in the back of the Indiana Jones warehouse and they'll restock Amazon. They may. The Wizards, because again, Wizards does a singular print run on every collector box set ever made since Throne of Eldrain release a couple years ago. And that's a fact. Everybody knows it. There's no debate on it. That is just a factual piece of information that has been verified from every distribution network in the United States. All the distribution. This, this is just the way it is. Now, what we don't know is when that, after that print run's completed, and let's say Wizards has 100, 100 pallets of collector boxes. And each pallet of collector boxes, I don't know, let's say one there, is 480 boxes. You know, maybe 20, 30 cases stacked on a pallet. They wrap it up, slap a pallet number on it, ship it out to their Texas warehouse, and then that gets distributed all over the country. Now, what we don't know is if they only sent out 90 of those 100 pallets, and there's still a small reserve as a second drip wave. The problem is, even if there's a second drip wave, when that product hits distribution, those distributors are not just going to sell the product at the same normal price as before. The distributors will mark the product up instead of being maybe $175 a box wholesale. They're going to sell it for probably to stores for probably $200, $210, maybe $220, depending on how high it is. And I know what some of you are saying. Well, really, how can the distribution chain adjust prices up to the stores to support higher? Because that's just how it is. I'm not going to go into whether I agree with it or not. That's a whole other conversation. But I'm telling you, this is just how the market dynamics and free market is going to work. So even if we get a tiny second wave and every store gets an extra 12 boxes, it means nothing. It means nothing. I told you all in a video two weeks ago, I bought 1.5 mil into Kamigawa, of which almost an entire 1.5 was just collector boxes and a smaller chunk was set in draft. I sold all the set in draft, obviously no problems. Um, I think I, what did I sell the, the set for? 99 a box. I sold draft for I think 89 a box, and you know, it, it all sold no problems. But the collector boxes, I, I just said, you know, I listened to the patrons. Patrons said they wanted the cheapest possible price, and I just I sold it like crazy. There were there's over a hundred a couple hundred patrons who bought a master case of Kamigawa collectors from me for 179 a box. And now they are literally they've made one to two thousand dollars in a week profit. And that's awesome. It's awesome to finally see, like, a release of a Magic product not come out and tank and everybody's 
everybody's angry and rah, 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 you know. We actually have, and then of course the other thousands of patrons who just bought three boxes from me, collector boxes, and I charged more for those at like 187, 189 or whatever. And the, I mean, we're talking substantial success in, in market acceptance here. And we talk about this on the channel all the time, folks. When the market accepts a product with open arms, everything's easy. Everything flows. Yeah, it's a creative, fun, different type of set. That's great and all, but at the end of the day, no matter how good or bad you feel, I feel about a product, the market's going to make the decision for us. And as of right now, the market has made the decision that these collector boxes could be the first standard set to be like a $300 collector box, like before the regular set even goes out of print, which is unheard of. Now, Throne of Eldrain being the very first collector box in 2019 was one that became very close. But I don't like to use that data point because that was the first of its kind in the market, myself, and everybody. We didn't know how to value it. Nobody knew how to value a Throne of Eldraine collector box. So it was, it was a lot of guessing. And as time went on, that $300 Throne of Eldraine collector box dropped down to like $210, $220, you know, depreciated maybe 20%, 25%. But then as the market aged, it went right back up. And now Throne of Eldraine collector boxes, forget it. They're so stupid rare. It's just dumb. They're like 300 plus if you can even... I mean, how many is even for sale in the entire open market? Are there even 50 boxes? It's stupid. And I'm looking at this stuff, and this is giving Wizards the green light. That is the most important thing everybody needs to understand. They are seeing the impact of a well-engineered product. We're not going to discount that. But they are seeing the side effects of bringing back chase cards. Cards that are truly rare that you open it and you freak out. Not, I opened a pack of magic and I got four rares, 17 mythics, and two phone numbers to Ruby's X. We're not talking about that. We're talking about real, truly unique, special chase cards. We're talking, and they're seeing that. And they're watching the market go crazy. And they're going to leverage that data into future collector boxes. And also, remember folks, a lot of stores did not take and reduce the Kamigawa collector boxes because they were tired of being burned on the last three collector box releases with Magic. The, the previous three standard sets, AFR, Crimson, Midnight, I mean, not in that order, but you get the idea. The last three standard sets, all of these collector boxes have come out and dropped in value, burning stores, taking losses, and they can't compete with Amazon and Wizards Direct. They crushed them. Wizards, and their lack of respect towards the LGS, crushed thousands of stores for tens of thousands of dollars. Therefore, Kamigawa, another variable that I have to mention, when it came out, most of these stores have discontinued Magic Collector boxes or cut their orders from 120 boxes or maybe five, ten thousand dollars worth of product to maybe one or two thousand dollars or a single case or just to one customer. So you have to understand that dynamic, which has also impacted the speed, the velocity of price changes and what's going on in the market. So I wanted to make this video because it's absolutely stunning. And I find the entire case study such a big deal I don't feel the overall market is understanding and appreciating or reflecting on how big of a game changer this is. Because essentially, in my opinion, maybe not the next standard set, which is that Streets set, but after that, you know, because that's probably already printed. But moving forward, I'm telling you all, this is going to shift the dynamic of how collector boxes are made permanently. And moving forward, I believe all collector boxes are going to have Chase Parallel cards, which will eventually lead us to serialized cards which will actually strengthen and stabilize the market, the secondary market, and increase revenue for Hasbro and Wizards as more stores increase the demand for collector boxes. I mean, think of one last thing. Can you imagine if the last three collector boxes from the last three standard sets were strong products and they didn't tank in value and every Magic store was increasing their pre-orders, which Wizards sees that data and they print a little bit more based on the, uh, the kind of test of the demand. Can you imagine... If that was the case, and Kamigawa had an even higher print run, which the market can take it, do you realize Wizards would have made, they could have easily made an extra probably, I would guess, 3 to $10 million in revenue on this single product run, just on collector boxes. And I think one of the reasons the supply is not as high as it should be is because most stores were reducing their exposure to Wizards products over lack of trust and judgment. And... Unfortunately, this is, this is a very impactful video full of proof 
that shows using past performance doesn't predict future results. Last three collector boxes were garbage fire. They tanked. Everybody hated it. Stores cut back. And suddenly, the fourth collector box, which is Kamigawa, comes out, changes the whole system. Which, again, is why it's so dangerous. And I see it in my own Patreon. I see it in my own customers. I see it in my own emails and comments and feedback of people saying, Rudy, I'm not buying Kamigawa. I'm just going to wait for it to tank and be on clearance at Papa Bezos for one sixty a box, which is below wholesale, below LGS cost. And then I'm going to buy in like that. Because that's how Wizards product does. It just comes out and collapses. And then I'm going to buy in on clearance when everybody was losing their ass. What a time to be alive, am I right?